Welcome to another instalment of blog learning at RHHS. Um, this will be sort of as you're getting towards the end of your blogging journey and starting to customise and improve your blogs. It's just a few tips. We, we start up the dashboard and we simply click on the layout button. We then want to see if we want to start playing with our templates. We can have a look at the templates on offer. There are many and we can choose the one we like. We'll have a look at this one, I reckon, see what it looks like. And then once we've selected it, we save it. Might not like some of the colour schemes, so we can change our fonts and colours and pick whichever fonts and colours we want for backgrounds, certain environments, certain events, like when a, a link has been visited, what colour will it change to? Nope. So we'll pick this green. And then, no, I don't think I like that, so we'll head and touch the clear edit, I will stick with the original and then we'll save changes. Now we'll look at how we can change page elements. So this is how the page is constructed, where all the different elements sit. And bringing up this box or like this tag will allow basically to drag and drop things as we like. As we don't like, we can move things to how we want them. We can change the sequence of this how we want it and then we can look at adding a new one. This gives us a number of options. Um, a slideshow is a slideshow of photos, so you can hook this to your Flickr, pa your Flickr page, and you have a slideshow of photos to view in your blog. A poll, we've seen these from, from my own blog. You'll see this, you can set up a poll for, for a questionnaire of what you like, allow people to respond and give you some basic statistics and results of that poll. A list is obvious and a link list is obvious, quite quite good for creating links, it's important for students to visit or for students or teachers for whatever your blog is about that are related to your blog or, or, or need further information on it. If you just like a simple picture. Feeds and the video bar, um, whilst options are certainly for advanced users, um, they are a great thing if you want to get some external inf information coming into your website. However, be aware that uh, there are a number of issues that you have little control of what's coming in. So if your source is trusted, like ABC News or Channel 7 News, your information is going to be fairly secure and, and there's, there's a set control over that. However, you might be receiving a feed from, say, YouTube of videos related to your site. What people can do is pick an inappropriate video, tag it with whatever your tags are looking for, and put them on the site, and that inappropriate video will show through your site. So you do have you have un you have limited control on feeds. So just consider who you're getting your feed from. Is it appropriate? Do, are they filtering? If they're not filtering, as an educationalist, I would suggest um, not a clever idea. Things like profile um, are already on your generally already show with page header. Blog archive is quite important if you if you've got an extended blog over time and it's a long blog. You can actually archive it. You don't have to have your every one listed, every post you put listed, viewed. You can actually have it on a side list on the side so students can filter through that. Each of these, when you click on them, will bring up the information needed to set that up. But we'll set up a nice easy one. We'll look at a list. Here we can set the title, the number of items we want to show on this list, how we want it sorted, and then we add items to this list that can be viewed from the blog. When we finished, we just hit save changes and move on. Okay, so once we've saved changes, last time we've saved changes, close the window, and when we click the refresh button on our browser, it will bring up the new page element. There it is. And if you want to view our blog, open in a new tab. And let's see what it looks like. Okay, that looks terrible. <laughs> let's start again. Let's look for a new one. And it's basically nothing. Nothing's lost through this process. So you just keep doing it till you're happy with the final result. If you want, if you've added an element, you want to delete it. You simply go in and edit, and remove the page element. It's as easy as that. Okay. Have fun. See what you can produce.